Are you looking to get the best possible start to your Tears of the Kingdom adventure? You want to start your journey on the right foot? Then you're in the right place. I wish someone would have told me these 22 essential tips before I started my journey. Make sure to stay until the very end because the last tip might just shock you. First things first, paraglider. As soon as we touch down in Hyrule, we want to be heading straight over to Lookout Landing. To find Lookout Landing, just follow the main quest line or look for the giant floating Hyrule castle in the sky. Lookout Landing is really close to that. You want to talk to Pora to progress this quest. Follow the quest line up to Hyrule Castle, talk to the NPC there, head back down and talk to Pora again. She'll walk over to the Skyview Tower at Lookout Landing, so go meet her over there. At this point, Pora will give you the paraglider, and by doing this quest here, it will also initiate all the Skyview Towers throughout. Hyrule. So now when you get to a Skyview Tower you can actually activate it and it will map the region. But if you didn't do this bit first then the Skyview Towers won't work. Make sure to actually use the Lookout Landing Skyview Tower so that it maps the region. So now we've initiated the Skyview Towers and we've got the Paraglider. The Paraglider is insanely useful in most situations so that's why we pick it up first thing. <laughs> Whilst you're in Lookout Landing, I'd recommend picking up the Hylian Armor set from the General Store. There's three pieces to this set, buy all three if you can, but if not, just buy one or two pieces. The extra defense from the armor is going to come in really handy, and it'll save you from getting obliterated by early game enemies. If you do have some jewels like topazes or rubies, you could sell those to get some extra rupees, and I would recommend doing that if that is your scenario. You could also sell any cooked foods or elixirs that you don't want. Another good reason for picking up this Hylian set is it's relatively easy to upgrade a little bit later on in the game when you get access to armor upgrades. Next we should unlock the camera on the Pura pad, so we need to talk to Joshua and pick up the quest called Camera Work in the Depths. For this quest we want to head south from Lookout Landing until we see the chasm, which is the giant demonic hole in the floor which any sane person probably wouldn't jump down, but we're the champion of Hyrule so we're jumping on down. Before you do jump in the chasm, grab the nearby shrine so that we can activate it as a fast travel point. You technically don't have to complete the shrine, you just need to press it to activate it. So we jump on down the chasm and make sure to pop your paraglider before you hit the ground. This is another reason why we grabbed the paraglider so we can go jumping on down demonic chasms. We'll find an NPC that tells us that Robbie has wandered off into the depths so we need to go and find Robbie. Before you start running off to find Robbie make sure you activate the light route so we can use that as a fast travel point. This nearby light route is called Nisoyj. By activating the light route it also lights up the area around us and it reveals that region of the depths on the map. Next we need to head off and find Robbie. Whilst you're exploring in the depths you want to be using bright bloom seeds to light light up your way. Bonus tip with these bright bloom seeds. Technically speaking you can attach the bright bloom seed to an arrow and then fire the arrow if you want to send the bright bloom seed a long way but I'd recommend actually just throw in the bright bloom seeds instead of using your arrows because ideally you want to be stocking up on your arrows and not blasting through them too fast. So to throw a bright bloom seed instead hold down R as if you was going to throw your weapon and then hold up on the d-pad which will bring up an item selection menu. So you want to head over to your bright bloom seeds and then throw them that way we won't waste too many arrows. After you've headed west for a bit in the depths you'll eventually find another light route. This light route is called Iasus. You'll have to forgive my pronunciation, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So make sure to activate the light route to reveal the area once again and then talk to Robbie who will be over by the campfire. Robbie will give you some instructions to take a photo of a statue. So use the Poropad camera to take a photo of the statue. Then head back to Lookout Landing and talk to Joshua to finish up this quest. Now you've got access to the camera on the Poropad which comes in a lot more useful than it sounds right now. All will be revealed a little bit later in this video. Now we've got access to the camera, we can take photos of stuff, and I'd recommend taking photos of absolutely everything that you can. The first time that you take a photo of something, it's going to add it to the Hyrule Compendium, and you'll know if you don't have the item in the Compendium because it kind of highlights it in orange colour. So anything that you don't think you've got a photo of, whip out your camera and pop a photo of it. You can add things into the Hyrule Compendium such as creatures, monsters, materials, equipments, and treasure. Don't forget that you can zoom in and zoom out with the camera as well, so if you need to snap a photo of a particularly tough monster, monster, what you can do is hide away behind some rocks, zoom in with your camera, pop a quick picture and then tactically retreat out of there. You'd press d-pad up to zoom in and d-pad down to zoom out. It's important to get a photo of as many things as you possibly can. I'll explain how this ties in with a particular Pura pad upgrade a little bit later. <laughs> Are your feet tired from running around Hyrule all day? Then you need to tame a horse so that you can gallop around Hyrule in style. You'll find a bunch of horses randomly roaming around the fields, but a pretty good spot to find them is a place called Whistling Hill. It's just north of the Riverside Stable, which is also close to a shrine called Tajikat's Shrine. So if you head north a little bit from Riverside Stable, you'll find a hill with a bunch of horses roaming around on it. To tame a horse, we need to sneak on up. To help with sneaking, you can unequip all of your gear so it doesn't make a noise as you're moving. Also, if you have any food or elixir, 
reflexes that increase your sneak, you can pop those as well. Press your left thumbstick into crouch, and then we want to be sneaking up towards the back of the horse. It's not directly towards the back of the horse because it'll probably kick you in the face. So it's kind of like at the back-ish, somewhere between the side and the back. Try not to get spotted by the horse or other horses as you're sneaking on up. And then as we get close enough, we can press A to jump on. Sometimes you might find that as you're really close, the horse might spot you. So if that is the case, you might want to just stand up and run as fast as you can to jump on the horse. Once you are on the horse, then you'll want to spam the L button to soothe the horse. After you've soothed the horse, you want to head on over to the stable, speak to the stable master. You'll need to hold ZL to target and then press A on the stable master to speak to him. Give your horse a name and register it and now you're good to go. Bonus tip with taming a horse. If you do have a white choo-choo jelly or an ice fruit, you can actually attach those items to the end of an arrow and shoot it at the horse and it will actually freeze the horse in place, at which point you can just run on up, wait for it to unfreeze and then make sure to pop A as soon as you can to mount the horse. Perhaps give that tactic a try if the sneak tactic is not working too well. Make sure to speak to each and every stable master at least one time. The first time that you speak to a stable master, you'll always be given one pony point, and pony points are like the stable's reward card system, so you can rack up pony points throughout your adventure and then you get rewards. The rewards that you get are generally cool upgrades for your horse, so it is worth racking up these points. To go claim your reward when you've got enough points, you would just go speak to the stable master at the side of the counter. You'll also get a pony point each and every time that you sleep over at the stables, so if you wanted to rack up some more points, you could also do that. Once you're galloping around Hyrule on your horse, it's worth mentioning that horses will actually auto run along paths. So if you get yourself on a horse and then on a path and then start your horse running in a certain direction along that path, you can actually just let go of the left thumbstick and your horse will do the rest. So if you fancy kicking back and enjoying the sights and sounds of Hyrule, then this option might be for you. Just keep in mind that certain horses will veer off the path sometimes. It can depend on how wild the horse is and your bond level with that horse. So if you have a lower bond level, your horse might veer off the path from time to time but if you spend more time with your horse and keep pressing L to soothe it that will increase your bond level and it will stop the horse from doing that. There are certain horses that are a bit more wild and some horses that are a bit more chill so depending on your particular horse it might affect your experience of this auto run mechanic. Next we need to find Koroks so we can get their Korok seeds and then unlock those sweet sweet inventory space upgrades. You want to be looking out for Koroks as much as you can do throughout your adventures. You might find them hiding under rocks or perhaps on top of a mountain and sometimes you might have to do certain activities to make the Korok pop up. If you see something that kind of looks like magic dust forward slash magic leaves running around a forest, that's usually a Korok. So make sure to run up to that magic dust looking thing and then press A to activate the Korok. You can also get two golden seeds if you find one of those Koroks that needs to get to their friends. Help them get over to their friend and they'll give you a Korok seed each. Later on in your adventure, you can actually get a Korok mask that shakes and makes noise every time there's a Korok nearby. There's 1,000 Korok seeds in this game. You don't really need to get all 1000 if you don't want to. Just grab as many as you can along your adventures to get those inventory space upgrades. If you do end up getting a thousand Korok seeds, feel free to let me know because that's awesome. Once you've got your hands on a bunch of Korok seeds, you'll need somewhere to hand them in to get that inventory space upgrade, which brings us on to Hestu. You can find Hestu in a bunch of different places. If you've just started the game and you haven't done one of the regional phenomena mainline quests, then you'll find Hestu northwest-ish from Lookout Landing. So if that is your scenario, then head in that direction. You'll pass New Seren Stables on your left. Keep on heading in this direction and you should see a Skyview Tower up on the hill. This is the location that you'll need to head to on the map. Eventually, you'll stumble upon Hestu, who is is worried as there's some scary trees so head on over to them and take the trees out using an axe to chop them down or some fire to burn them down is a good way to do this after that's done Hestu will be very grateful for your mighty efforts he'll then sniff out that you've got a Korok seed hand in your first Korok seed to Hestu to get that sweet sweet inventory upgrade give Hestu a second Korok seed to get a second upgrade and then Hestu will move over to Lookout Landing after that go find Hestu over at Lookout Landing and now you've got access to inventory upgrades if you have completed one of the regional phenomena mainline quests then you'll find that Hestu is already at Lookout Landing. On top of that if you've already discovered Korok Forest and you've done a particular quest over there then it's likely that you'll find Hestu over at Korok Forest. Once you've unlocked Hestu you can now talk to him to hand in those Korok seeds. You can choose to add an extra weapon slot, a shield slot or a bow slot. Don't forget that you've got the Ascend ability. Because this ability is so outright crazy, it's really easy to forget that you've got it. It's mega useful in almost every situation. You can ascend through cave ceilings, through platforms to get on top of the platform. You can even ascend through certain monsters. So if you find yourself stuck with seemingly no way out, check if you can ascend. 
We also want to unlock a new Pura Pad feature called Auto Build. This ability remembers anything that you've made in the past and then just auto builds it for you. It can do this in two slightly different ways. One way is if all the parts are available and in front of Link and inside the purple circle, then Auto Build will just grab all the parts and stick it all together. The second way is if the parts aren't available, then Auto Build will just automatically create them out of thin air, but it will cost you Zonite for every part that is created out of thin air. This can come in insanely useful in many different situations. The auto build history list only goes up to a certain amount of builds, so make sure to press favourite on the ones that you want it to remember. You can also be rewarded with schematics for auto build, which are usually given to you by certain NPCs, and these schematics will already have some kind of vehicle or something like that designed for you. To get auto build, it's technically part of a quest called Mystery in the Depths, which you won't be given if you haven't completed one of the regional phenomena mainline quests yet, but technically we can actually go and get auto build anyway without being given the quest. So what you want to do is go back down into the depths where you last found Robbie. You'll need to be fast traveling to the light route called Iasis. That's where you took that photo of that statue. And then what we need to do to get where we need to go is follow the statues. So if you look at the direction that the statue is facing, you want to be lining yourself up with that and then running in a straight line in the direction that the statue is facing. And eventually you will find another statue. Then you'll need to rinse and repeat this process. Generally, this will be heading in a south direction. On your travels, you should pass a light route called Nikayam. So make sure to activate this light route as you pass by it. You also want to be using your bright bloom seeds to light up your way. Be careful of the gloom, which is like the dark red type substance. Try not to stand in that the best that you can do. You also need to be careful of enemies. You technically don't need to fight them. So try and be sneaky and maneuver your way around the enemies if possible. It's usually best to avoid these in the early game. Eventually, you'll find a building called the Great Abandoned Central Mine, and you'll see two NPCs at this abandoned mine. There's a Zonai construct just next to the two NPCs. Before pressing on the Zonai construct, I just want to mention that this is going to activate a boss fight, so be prepared for a boss. The boss fight is not too tricky, so don't worry about it too much. When you're ready, press on the Zonai construct to progress this quest. You'll also unlock the Great Abandoned Central Mine as a fast travel point. Follow a couple of instructions, and now you've unlocked the auto build ability. This will then initiate the boss fight. Technically speaking, you don't actually have to stay and win this fight if you don't want to. You can actually fast travel out and leave the fight till later. However, if you do win the fight, you're actually rewarded with 100 crystallized charges, which come in very handy. More on crystallized charges a little bit later in this video. If you do stay and win this fight, talk to the constructs after winning. One of the NPC constructs will actually give you a schema stone, so it is worth staying and defeating this boss if you can. Now that you've done all this stuff, technically speaking, to end this quest, you would have to talk to Joshua at Lookout Landing. However, the game doesn't actually let you finish this quest until you've done one of the regional phenomena mainline quests. After you do hand in this quest to Joshua, it unlocks more quests with Robbie, and Robbie's quest line has got some awesome upgrades for the Pura Pad. So hold that thought, more information on that quest line in just a minute. Let's take a look at upgrading your Zonai battery. It costs 100 crystallized charges to upgrade your battery. If you have won that previously mentioned boss fight and been rewarded with the 100 crystallized charges, then we want to head to a crystal refinery. There's one just outside of Lookout Landing towards the north. So if you head there and talk to the construct, you'll be able to upgrade your battery. The more battery life that you have, the longer you can run your Zonai devices. And you can go back to the crystal refinery every time that you've got 100 crystallized charges or more to keep expanding your battery over and over again. I believe the max maximum batteries that you can have is eight batteries, but technically you can double the power in all eight, so effectively it gives you a total of 16. In total, you'll need 4,500 crystallized charges to max this out. So if you're a fan of using Zonai devices, upgrading your battery is crucial. Do you enjoy rupees? Well, well, well. Good, because the next NPC that we need to unlock is very enthusiastic about wells, and they'll pay you 10 rupees per well that you've discovered. There's a total of 58 wells, so a maximum of 580 rupees up for grabs. The NPC that we need to find is called Ferra. I think her location is randomized, but I have found her down the well at Wetland Stables. These stables are not too far from Lookout Landing. If you don't find her down the well at Wetland Stables, then check the wells at other stables around Hyrule. Once you've found her down the well, she She'll give you 10 rupees for every well that you've uncovered on the map. Then she'll relocate to the well at Lookout Landing. So make sure to keep your eyes peeled for wells along your travels. All you need to do to discover them is just run up close. And then when you see the text appear on your screen, you've discovered the well. Every so often after you've discovered a few more wells, make sure to head back to Lookout Landing and talk to Farah. She'll give you another 10 rupees for every well that you've uncovered. Remember, wells equals rupees. 
Make sure to stock up on arrows. You'll be smashing through arrows faster than you can say. <coughs> so if you see any arrows for sale, make sure to pick up as many as you can do. You'll be surprised how quickly you blast through these. As well as stocking up on arrows, you should also stock up on Zonai devices. So if you do find one of these Zonai device dispensers, make sure to grab a bunch of Zonai devices from it. You can activate these dispensers by popping in Zonai chargers, large Zonai chargers, soldier construct horns, or captain construct horns. Make sure to pop a few of those in and get some Zonai devices. Once again, you guessed it, they come in massively useful in most situations in the game, so it's definitely worth stocking up. Complete shrines and get the Lights of Blessing. For every four Lights of Blessing that you get, you can exchange those at a Goddess Statue, and then you can upgrade your maximum stamina or upgrade your maximum hearts. The easiest Goddess Statue to find is the one that's at Lookout Landing. The Goddess Statue is down in that emergency shelter bit. I'd probably recommend going for a few stamina upgrades first instead of hearts, but ultimately the choice is yours. I do have a YouTube playlist on Shrine Guides, which will show you where the shrine is and how to complete the shrine. So if you're looking to smash out some shrines and stock up on some Lights of Blessing, and have a cheeky look at that playlist. Side note here, I do also have a playlist for Skyview Towers, so if you wanted some help activating the Skyview Towers, then check out that playlist as well. Quite early on in your adventure, I'd also recommend completing one of the Regional Phenomena mainline quests, specifically the Regional Phenomena over at Rito Village. The main reason for getting this done is so that we can actually unlock the quest Mystery in the Depths at Lookout Landing. That was the auto build one. The Mystery in the Depths quest will be given to you by Joshua. So then after you've completed one of the main Regional Phenomena mainline quests, Quests, you can then finish up the Mystery in Adept quest with Joshua, which will then unlock the next quest with Robbie. And Robbie's got some awesome upgrades for us, so that's why we want to do that. You don't have to do the Rito Village one first, but that's the one that I'd recommend. Once you make your way over to the Rito Village, you'll find the Rito Armor Set in a shop, and I'd highly recommend investing in this armor set, specifically for its cold resistance. With most resistances, you get resistance level 1 and resistance level 2, and it's absolutely vital to have cold resistance level 2 in this game. For example, you might want to wear this armor set, because obviously this is the coolest looking armor set in the entire game, but the game really wants you to wear this armor set, because there's just so many cold areas in this game. For example, if you make your way up into the sky, you'll find it gets cold, so you're going to need that cold resistance. If you're exploring a tall mountain and you get to the top, you're going to find it's cold. Once again, you're going to need that cold resistance, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So make sure to pick up this Rito armor set as early as you can. And don't be afraid to sell any rubies or topazes and stuff like that so you can afford to buy at least one piece from this set. You're going to need cold resistance level two a lot in this game. Another thing that we should do whilst we're over towards Rito Village is activate the quest called Potential Princess Sightings. To do that, we need to talk to two NPCs at the Lucky Clover Gazette. This is located just a little bit outside of Rito Village. Head inside the Lucky Clover Gazette and talk to the two NPCs. What happens with this is that it activates loads of side quests at the stables all around Hyrule. And every time you complete one of these side quests, you're rewarded with rupees. And the more of these side quests that you keep completing, the rupee reward gets higher. But if you don't talk to these two NPCs, PCs first at the Lucky Clover Gazette, then none of these side quests are going to activate at these stables at all. So it's massively worth activating these early in your game. Now that you've completed one of the regional phenomena mainline quests, and you've defeated the boss that were mentioned before at the Great Abandoned Central Mine in the Depths, we can finally hand in and finish the Mystery in the Depths quest to Joshua. After that's all done, Robbie will give us his quest. Robbie's quest is called Hatento Village Research Lab. We need to make our way over to Robbie's lab, which will be indicated on the map. If you haven't made your way over there yet, then mounting up on your horse and galloping across Hyrule is probably the best way to do it. This quest will unlock us the shrine sensor on the Pura Pad, and essentially what that will do is play us a little noise every time that there's a shrine near to us. It plays like a little beeping sound. So make your way over to Robbie's research lab. You'll find Robbie inside. If you talk to Robbie here, it will progress this quest. Side note here, after talking to Robbie, he's going to ask you to kind of like test out the shrine sensor. And what you need to do is kind of walk away from Robbie quite slowly. Make sure to walk slowly in the same direction that the shrine sensor is beeping in. Don't go running around the lab like a crazy person because Robbie is just going to keep stopping you from running around. Make sure to do that slow walk and then it's going to progress the quest. After that's done, we need to go and find the shrine, which is just below the research lab. So head on down and activate the shrine. Technically speaking, you don't need to complete the shrine. You just need to activate it and then head back to Robbie. Once that's done, you've now unlocked the shrine sensor on the Pura Pad. Now you can be smashing out all of those shrines, getting those lights of blessings and getting those hearts and stamina upgrades.
On top of that, there are a few more upgrades that we can get from Robbie here. There's one that's called Hero's Path, and to unlock the Hero's Path upgrade, you'll need to have found 15 shrines. You don't need to have completed the shrines, but you just need to activate 15 shrines. If you've already unlocked 15 shrines, then you'll automatically unlock Hero's Path. Hero's Path is probably not the most useful ability in the world. It kind of just shows where you have been previously, but I guess that could be useful in the depths so you can remember where you've been. Another upgrade that we can get is what's called Sensor Plus. To unlock Sensor Plus, you'll need to photograph five different monsters. So that's why I mentioned before that you should take photos of everything. If you've already got five or more photos of monsters, then you'll unlock Sensor Plus. The reason that the Sensor Plus is massively important is because anything that you've taken a photo of and added it into the Hyrule Compendium, you can now set the sensor to that thing and it will play the beeping sound when we're close to that thing. So for example, if you've already taken a photo of a well, you could then set the Sensor Plus to track wells and then you could easily be discovering all the wells around Hyrule. You remember that NPC back at Lookout Landing? You see, it's now all coming together. So it's really good for tracking down materials or monsters if you wanted to hunt a certain monster. And the next upgrade that we can grab is called Traveler's Medallion. With Traveler's Medallion, Robbie's going to ask you to go to an ancient tech lab, which is quite far away. It's in Northeast Hyrule. Once you've made your way over to the ancient tech lab, you have to fight a couple of enemies. So be prepared for a quick fight. Inside the building, you'll find a treasure chest. In that chest, you'll find a Travel Medallion prototype. Bring that prototype back to Robbie and he'll give you the Travel Medallion. You can unlock a second Travel Medallion if you've unlocked 10 Skyview Towers, and you can also get a third Travel Medallion if you've unlocked 15 Skyview Towers. The Travel Medallions are essentially a DIY fast travel point, so you can place your own fast travel point wherever you want to, and then just fast travel to it whenever you want. And then if you no longer want that fast travel point there, you can actually remove it by pressing collect, which will put it back in your key items, and then just place it down in a different place. Now that we've got the Travel Medallions, we don't always have to rely on a Skyview Tower, a shrine, or a light route to fast travel to. Have you ever been exploring Hyrule and then out of nowhere... <laughs> Shocking. I know. Let's talk about lightning and lightning storms. If you look towards the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you'll see the current weather conditions and also the upcoming weather conditions. If you see your icon is pointed to a lightning bolt, then you're currently in a thunderstorm. A lot of your equipment will conduct the lightning. So if you do find yourself in this situation, make sure to open your menu and go over to your gear. And if you see anything that's got the lightning animation over it, which is generally any gear that has metal in it, make sure to not have that equipped. That's all you need to do to avoid the lightning strike and not get blasted into a Oblivion. Told you the last tip might shock you. And now you're fully prepared for your adventures throughout Hyrule. Hopefully you enjoyed these 22 Tears of the Kingdom tips. Let me know in the comments which tip you found the most useful, or feel free to share your own tips with us. Make sure to keep them spoiler free of course. If you did like this video and you want me to make more videos like this, then please consider giving the video a like. I could do another one of these Tears of the Kingdom tips videos if you're interested. If you want to be extra generous, then feel free to share this video with someone that might find it useful. If you made it this far in the video, I massively appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I've got some other videos that have just popped up on the screen right now. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll likely enjoy those ones as well. 